Here's the conundrum. You have a weapons and force development system in which it takes decades to produce new, exquisite combat platforms, and you suddenly need to keep up with technology updates moving five times that fast. How do you modernize your acquisitions process to adapt to that environment? It's a problem facing forces across the military. For insight on how the Air and Space Forces are doing it, a panel of top officials was on hand at the AFA 2024 event to discuss the topic. Here's some of what they had to say. In your all's mind, what is it that's going to make this so hard, given the current context that we're in? Modernization's not a new thing. We've been doing it for a long time, uh, pretty successfully. Why now? What is it that's going to make it so hard? So I think the secretary hit on, on a lot of the, the key points here of what is making modernization so hard. So I'm going to come at it from a Space Force perspective, uh, but it kind of resonates across the entire DAF. Um, for the Space Force, first of all, we are the smallest service. We have the smallest budget and the largest AOR. And we are starting behind the power curve with kit that was optimized for a benign environment. So we have nothing in front of us but a vertical curve. In order to get up that vertical curve, we need two things. We need people and we need money. And right now, being the smallest service, we're struggling to get the resources we need to do the modernization that we need, but also to buy the new kit, the leading edge kit, to get after the threat that is, that is accelerating at an exponential pace. Right now, there's a capability gap between us and the adversary, and that capability gap is in our favor. But that capability gap is rapidly closing. And what we've got to do is invest and invest to a point that we can stop that gap from closing, but reverse that gap and make it wider. From an Air Force perspective, I think Secretary Kendall's closing comment uh, talking about we don't have an innovation problem, we have a resourcing problem, I think really gets to the heart of it. The challenge with modernization is you have to pay for it somehow. And so as we know, we know what we have to do. It's not, it's not a particular mystery. Secretary Kendall uh, gave us a good rundown of that. The question is, what is the trade to pay for that? Are we going to uh, take end strength uh, away from the, the service? And I, I would suggest uh, we already know that we have some critical shortages in uh, a number of our career fields, security forces, maintenance, uh, aircraft maintenance, among others. And so we don't really want to bring down our end strength, and then you go, well, then what's the other alternative? The other alternative is, is force structure and readiness. It is, it, it is uh, the O&M dollars. It's the things that it takes to keep us flying. And we don't want a hollow force. And so it's really the, the very difficult work in deciding how to modernize is you either have to have more resources, to Secretary Kendall's point, or you have to make very difficult choices within the resources you have. And so that, that's really what it comes down to. You know, it, it all starts with doing the system engineering right up front. We have to get that right, step one. Step two, then we have to get the right acquisition strategy, something that's going to lead to an executable contract, something that we award for realistic cost and realistic schedule. And then third, we need to execute and deliver on cost and schedule. Every time we overrun a program or we slip schedule and it costs us more money, we're robbing our future to modernize. And we've got to get into the habit of delivering everything on cost and schedule. Can I, can I build on those two comments? Please. So I want to take it one step further. And, and the chief kind of started to go there. With this threat, we are never going to go alone. It'll never be the Space Force alone. It'll never be the Air Force alone. It'll never be the Navy alone. It won't be the Marine Corps. It definitely won't be the Army alone. We are all going to have to fight in a very integrated fashion. That is a completely different way of acquiring our systems that the secretaries are talking about. We have, to, we have to acquire our capabilities from the start, understanding that they're part of a larger enterprise and architect that enterprise in. The work that Luke Cropsey is doing under the DAF Battle Management, the DAF Metal Management work Network is all about networking all this stuff together, but not just within space and air. He's also now looking at it across the joint fight with the Joint Fires Network and integrating in the Marine Corps, the Army, and the Navy uh, into that solution. That's going to be a much larger challenge to us going forward because it's not only a technology challenge, but it's a culture challenge, which gets back at what Secretary Hunter said. How do I pivot from buying widgets to buying capabilities? That's a mind shift that we haven't done yet.